<sighs> it's been over three weeks since my last deck profile. I really need to pump one out. But my current project still needs some... fine-tuning. So I can't use those. There has to be some deck. Maybe one I'm familiar with? One that fucks. One that I've been playing for over half a decade. And if I see someone nitpick my list, I will rain down upon you, Helfer, that no Storm King went! And here is my Mermail list. Now, this deck has gone through so many changes over the years, but it's in a spot where I'm really happy with it. It is absolutely astronomically consistent, and I'm going to go through card by card, then we'll go into a bit of a combo video. So, to start us off, we have the reason you play the deck, Moon Glacia, rip two cards out of your opponent's hand. This used to be a lot more devastating than it was now. Now, if you pitch two cards from your opponent's hand, it doesn't matter, they have one card starters. Either way, them having less resources in the hand is always a good thing. We have one Danger Ogopogo, a very spicy tech I've brought in here, and you'll see why I play this in the combo time. We have one Abyss Megalo, sometimes you really just need to push for game uh, by searching out a Megalo if you're going second. It's Basically a one card of Decay Machine, special summon this, grab the equip, tribute a monster, attack for 32, 32, it's really great, love this card. Triple Abyss this, discard a card, special summon, it's one of your main extenders. It also grabs you your Abyss gun from the deck so you can continue popping off and keeping your hand presence up. We have one Lapis Dragon, if you need to get a tuner out in the field, simply search this off Dragoons and you're off to the races. Speaking of... Triple Atlantean Dragoons, this card is absolutely insane. This card is literally just Ben 10. This is this this is Ben 10 on a water monster. It is not once per turn. Every time it gets into the graveyard for the effect, you do get to search out a sea servant monster. You have a wide pool of cards you can search for. This card is nuts and it is it's it's so fucking good. Moving on to some extenders, we have Ten Years Spirit and Thana. If you have an empty field, just go ahead and special summon it. Great for starting your plays, just great for having a body on the field, frankly. One Abyss Gun, we talked about it. Get one of your Mermails from Graveyard and discard it. Triple Deep Sea Minstrel. This card is great. Discard this card plus one of your waters, which can be Dragoons for an extra search. But pitch one of your waters, that way you're going to be able to look at your opponent's hand and just rip out whatever the problem card is you see there. It is insanely good for starting your plays and making sure you are not going to run into things like Nibiru, or even if things like Droll and Awkward, these are two of the worst hand traps for the deck. Uh, but this card does amazingly, and it's searchable, again, off of the Dragoons, off of the Deep Sea Aria. This card is something you pretty much want to go into each game. Um, you don't need to, but it's absolutely necessary to any high level play. I always like to go in for it, even just to be safe. And for a hand trap, we have Triple Ash Blossom. This is the one downside, is that it is a fire type. Unfortunately, I do need to play the Ash Blossom because no other hand trap really is a water, but it's a good card when it goes off. You don't really only locks you out of one play in this deck. Other than that, you really don't need to keep your graveyard fully water. Triple Swamp Frog and one Ronin Toad, and this is great for if you just want to get out your totally awesome right off the bat. It's also an extender to start off your plays. Deep Sea Diva. This card is your one card start. This is the card you want to see every single game. If you do not have this in your hand, you are using your Arya, using your Dragoons to get this first and foremost. This is the most important card in the deck to see in your opening hand. It just gets out Atlantean Prince. It's an extra body on the field to help start your link combos. It's an amazing card. I'm so glad this is at 3. Then we have the one Atlantean Heavy Infantry. It's a good option in case you really need to get rid of a problem card on the field that can be popped, but it's also a combo starter extender. You can normal summon your Heavy Infantry, then normal summon your Deep Sea Diva, and you already have an additional body on the field. It's an extender. It's a great card. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Then we have the boy, Triple Atlantean Prince. This is a card that bolstered Mermails into an absolutely new era of Yu-Gi-Oh! It's insane, you get to send a Dragoon to add Dragoon, Dragoon searches, then you can use that search to grab something that also pitches Dragoon, it's just, this card is the heart and soul of the deck, what you need, the Deep Sea Diva 4 to get this out. Without this card, this deck really wouldn't function. 
Then we have one Fishborg Launcher. This is the one thing in the entire deck that you have to have only waters in your graveyard. So if you happen to Ash Blossom going turn one and you're going turn second, you unfortunately cannot use the Fishborg Launcher effect. So you will have to do something else. But again, it's one card out of this entire deck. And if you're going second, you're really not going to be doing the bread and butter combo. You're instead going to be focusing towards killing the opponents. So Fishborg Launcher really isn't necessary. Triple Moray of Greed. This card is really good. You have a lot of water monsters, like 90% of your monsters are water. So if you have monsters that are like your Garnets, for example, if you have Fishborg Launcher in hand, Ronin Tone in hand, these things that you'd rather see in the deck, uh, Gun being another one, you could just shuffle them back and hopefully get one of your Deep Sea Diva. You're just hoping to get Deep Sea Diva. If you don't have Deep Sea Diva and you have two waters in this, you're going to roll this 100% of the time to get Deep Sea Diva. And to get Deep Sea Diva, we also have Deep Sea Aria. This just lets you grab any level 4 or lower sea surface monster, but you do have to banish a water, which is relatively easy in this deck to get a water. You can start your turn off by Minstroy, you could do your Swap Frog place to begin, do an Abyssus. You have a lot of different ways to get a water in the graveyard for the purpose of searching off Deep Sea Aria, um, but Deep Sea Aria is really great. If you already have your Deep Sea Diva in hand, this will get you your Minstrel, which again will help protect your combos. One Call by the Grave to protect your combos, and one Abyss Scale of the Mizuchi. Now this is something that you search off of the Abyss Megalo, it's a bit of a garnet in the deck, but it gives your Megalo 800 plus attack and has a on resolution spell effect negation. So what that means is if, for example, you have a full board and your opponent tries to drop with it by discarding a monster, a spell, you're not able to respond to the activation of droplets with it, but this doesn't respond to the activation. On resolution of droplets, it will get negated. So this is an insanely good card that can catch a lot of people off guard if they're not really focused on that sort of thing. Like. They try to dark roll you, this gets negated. They try to really do anything. Uh, extravagance off the top, they all get negated. The only thing is you cannot choose which card to negate. It's always going to be the first card your opponent plays, your first spell card your opponent will play during that turn. Now on to the extra deck. We have Adamancipator Dragite, just a spell and trap negation, comes up sometimes. White Aura Whale, absolutely good for going second, push for game. Gungnir is our level 7 of choice, really good for really just breaking boards. You want to pitch a couple of cards, pop a couple of cards, um, and really easy to go off of with R, Tatsunoko. Tatsunoko, you can use any of your monsters from your hand, so if you have a spare Shinthana or Dragoons, you can use that to go into this and go off from there. On a similar note, we have Coral Dragon. Coral Dragon is just an amazing card, and it's also a target for Helga Fibrex if you really need to go into it for that. And we also have Herald of the Arclight. This is something we can easily go into within the deck, and it's just a really good negate option if we're able to get it. We have one number 38 Hope Harbinger Dragon, one Mermail Abyss Gaios. This card is a Amazing. Not only is it something you can equip the Abyss Scale to Mizuchi to, but it is a, during either player's turn, quick effect, negate all monsters your opponent controls. Of course, if your opponent has a monster that has 3000 attack, it really won't negate it, but it negates pretty much everything on your opponent's side of the field, which I think is amazing. Bahamut, totally awesome, self-explanatory. Appaloosa, Marino Core, and Enemy. This card locks you into waters for the turn, but other than that, it's fantastic. Uh, Abyss Lancia. Crystron, Halka Fibrax, and Bujinki Ashishima. Now, this is a crucial part of the combo that you will be seeing shortly. Uh, but yeah, this is the deck. This is the Mermail deck, and I love Mermail so much, and I hope you will too after this. Let's get into that combo. And let's quickly go over our bread and butter combo. The combo we're going to want to hit every single turn if possible. Uh, it creates a great board with multiple negates and it really only takes 2.5 cards. Um, though you'll usually end up with 3 cards in hand at the end, you'll see. Anyways, all we really need for this is Deep Sea Diva plus any extender. Literally any extender. Now this could be anything from like an Abyssus, to a Swamp Frog, to a Shinthana, to a um, Heavy Infantry. Literally any of these cards will get you into this combo, and there is a million and one ways to get to them in this deck. There's a million and one ways to search it out. This is an insanely consistent deck and you'll see so in the replays here. But for now, let's just go ahead and 
touch on the combo. So first we're going to want to get out our extender here, um, then we're going to normal summon our Deep Sea Diva and bring out from here Atlantean Prince, one of the most absolutely busted cards that they've ever printed, and I'm going to go ahead and send Dragoons, which is essentially our Ben 10, and add Dragoons. Now, not once per turn, Dragoons is going to activate its effect, and here we are going to go ahead and just grab the Moon Glacier to start. Um, now, at this point, if we didn't have Deep Sea Diva and we only had the Atlantean Prince, we could also grab the Lapis Dragon. That way, we'd be able to satisfy the Tuner aspect of things. So, again, just more ways that this deck is consistent that you really don't even need the Deep Sea Diva. So, we're going to go and activate this and grab our Fishborg Launcher. Fishborg Launcher is a level 1 tuner, and the level 1 is really what we care about here. So, we could go into Bujinki Ashishima. This is going to let us bring back both of our Dragoons from Hand and Graveyard, and go into Bahamut Shark. Now, through any of this, this is the first time you're going to be able to get a um, negate into the graveyard. So, this is something we need to keep in mind. So we're going to go ahead and bring out the Totally Awesome, activate this Engrave, and we are going to add Danger Ogopogon. Now, this is a little bit of a spicy tech that I don't see in a lot of Mermail decks, probably for good reason, um, but it's very important not to use this until we absolutely need to, because we do not want to have any non-waters in the graveyard. So we have five, so we're going to go ahead into Moon Glacier, rip two cards from the hand. At this point, we are going to activate Fishborg Launcher, just to get an extra body on the field. Now, this can be used for Synchro Summons, but in this situation, we are just going to use it as Link Material to give Appaloosa one more negate. And here is where we are going to go ahead and try the Ogopogo. And it can really just be any of these other cards in the hand, that's why I said the 2.5 card combo, um, because we do need an extra discard even though we are just going to draw another card and replenish it but we do need that 0.5 card in the hand so if we only had Ogopoga plus one card we needed that. Um, of course the more cards you have in hand the less of a chance you actually discard the Ogopogo so there is a bit of a chance in that but even if we just stop without the Ogopogo we have three off the Appaloosa, two totally awesome and we still left with three cards in hand. Um, but from here, we are going to go ahead and go into our Hope Harbinger. Now, this does a couple of things. One, it's an extra negate, but more importantly, this gets the Moon Glacia off the field so you do not lose your next battle phase when it goes to the graveyard. That is probably the most important reason why I added this little bit into the deck. Um, and again, you have three cards left in your hand. This, you can have things like using Deep Sea Minstrel to pitch out a problem... Uh, hand trap in your opponent's hand right off the bat of your plays, you could really get your Moon Glacier down at any point during your combo. Um, it's a really flexible combo, you really are always going to be able to get Moon Glacier, you just got to make sure you search it first so you don't miss your timing window to get it out. But all in all, this deck is absolutely fantastic, here is the bread and butter combo. And that is it for the video. Now, I wanted to go into a bit more depth show off a few bit of replays, but I feel like the video was getting long enough, and I do want this just to be kind of an introductory to Mermail for my channel. I am absolutely going to be touching on this deck in the future, and I'm most likely going to have a follow-up video going through some replays, but here I just wanted to show sort of the bread and butter combo, the deck, and kind of some of the theory behind the deck, um, but in subsequent videos I'll be showing off some replays, showing off how it goes about sort of making garbage hands good with these consistency tools we've added, how we go about playing around problem hand traps, showing you how the minstrel works in action, things like that. But for now, this is all the video I have for you today. Uh, if you liked the video, please give it a like. If you want to see more, please subscribe. Peng best deck, water is the best. This is No Penguin, signing out.